Hello everyone, this is my Alexander Master Toolmaker milling machine. Now, one of the really nice things about this milling machine is that it has a quill. Now, what's a quill you may be asking? This is my bench drill. Now, the thing about a bench drill is it's actually designed and built around a quill. Now, if I move this handle and rotate it like this, you notice that the chuck starts to descend. If I use this lever here, push it forward and down, that locks the chuck at this low position. Now, this handle is called the quill lock. <laughs> Bit of a clue there. This silver piece just here is the quill. Now, what a quill is, is a shaft that contains a spindle. Now, this shaft is the interface between the turning world of the chuck and the stationary world of the uh, casting here. It contains the bearings that support the chuck. It also, at the top here, contains a special coupling that allows the shaft to be driven even though the, dra the uh, shaft is coming down or going up. That's what a quill is. Now, the quill on this milling machine is, resides within the vertical head here and it works very similarly to the bench drill. Now, on the left hand side, just here, there's the return spring for the quill. I can actually hang on to the outside of that and twist it, and now you can see the quill coming down and then going back. Going down and then coming back. Now, what the drilling machine has is a nice handle. Uh, this milling machine has a shaft, but it has no handle. So that's what this project's gonna be. We're going to design and build a handle to operate the quill. Let's look at the bench drill again and zero in on the operating handle. This design of handle works really well on the drill and I think it'll also work well on the quill of the milling machine. So this is our first design decision. The handle will have a metal hub, three or four metal branches and round bakelite handles at the end of those branches. Let's now look at the vertical head of the milling machine and in particular the quill operating shaft just here. The hub of our new handle needs to clamp onto this square shaft. Its size is 9.5 millimetres or 3 8 of an inch square and it's 17 millimetres long. That's just under 3 quarters of an inch. Now, before we carry on with the design process, I wanted to check through the stock that I have on the shelves and then design what we're going to build around the stock that we have. It's going to be a lot better to do that and not design it around something which I then have to source later on. So I've been looking through and I've come up with some bits and pieces which are on the desk just down here. So I'll bring you down and you can have a look at them. Now, the first thing I found was this. It's a piece of mild steel, mild steel bar, two inches in diameter, that's 50 mil, and it's about 37 millimeters high, which is an inch uh, and a half. So that I'm hoping will make a good hub. I also found a piece of bright mild steel bar. This is nine millimeters in diameter, and this should be good for the, the branches that will come out from the hub, whether there be three or four of them. The other thing I found was these bags, and these have Bakelite handles in. This uh, bag has inch, which is 25 mil in diameter, and the other bag is uh, an inch and a quarter, or 32 mil. I suspect the smaller handles will look better. So that's a really good start. Now, when I'm designing something like this, I normally sit at my desk at the, the back of the workshop here, sheet of paper in front of me, I've got a pencil and an eraser, and then I'll start sketching down some ideas. And I'll do a couple of ideas, and then if nothing else comes forward, I'll go do another job. I'll be thinking about it in the back of my mind, think of another idea, go back to my desk, and then sketch it out again. Well, after a day or so, I end up with all these sketches, which I then go through and try and decide which idea to take forward. And uh, that idea I will normally then draw to scale to make sure that it actually works. And it's funny how uh, sometimes it works really well in your head, but when you draw it to scale, all of a sudden you can see these gaping holes in the design and you can't use it. Well, I've got all of these, um, these sketches and I'm gonna show them to you and take you through my thought process for this job. I'd like some feedback from you if, you, if you've got time to, to send in a comment. Have a look at these designs. If it's interesting and I get some, some good feedback, then what I'll do the next time we're designing something and building it, then I'll put the sketches in again. If you find them really boring, then tell me that I won't do that next time. But if you could give me some feedback, that'd be great. Anyway, let's have a look at these designs. 
This is the first sheet I started scribbling on. In the top left here, that represents the quill shaft that comes out the side of the vertical head. My first thoughts were, well, we, what we could do is clamp onto that with two grub screws going through the hub, as shown here. But then I thought, well, those grub screws are liable to uh, damage the surface. I then thought, well, if we split the hub right in half and then have that screw together with two uh, screws as shown here then that would clamp onto the square shaft quite nicely. The problem I see with that is every time I wanted to take the handle on or off I would need to get an allen key to uh, undo or do up the two screws. The sketches underneath these are collets and uh, for quite a while I was looking at these thinking well I could do different collets and I could have a single knob in the centre to do up and that would clamp onto the square shaft. In the end I decided that was uh, too complicated so that went out the window as well. This is the second sheet. You see here in the centre I thought what about having two of the handles uh, on a long thread uh, with a brass bottom and then they could screw into the the hub and clamp down onto the spindle. And uh, I'm thinking, well, that's not such a bad idea. I wouldn't need then an Allen key. So I kept that idea in my head. Uh, the other sketches around, I started thinking about putting clamps actually within the hub and have them on spindles. But again, it was too complicated. So I dumped that idea as well. This is sheet three, and I quite like this idea. You see, here's the hub, and the hub has been drilled and then filed square at this end to slide over the quill spindle, which is there. So that's as, that's the way that it keys onto the spindle. The way it stays in place is at the other end, just here, there is a bolt which you can screw up by hand. As it screws up, it goes, it pushes against this green piece, which then pushes against that blue thrust plate, which squashes is the rubber. That rubber squashing will hold the hub onto the shaft. When you wanted to take it off you would unscrew the bolt, that would release the pressure from the rubber and you'd be able to pull it off again. I quite like this idea. So on sheet four I drew out this idea uh, and it's twice a normal size and it turned out that the sizes of material I had I couldn't get all the fixings in so I've had to shelve this idea. I took another piece of paper and started scribbling uh, on that and thought well if we had two pieces of metal both of which had a square hole in and both of which were pushed over the square shaft that we need to lock onto if we held them together at this end and then pushed them apart at the top they would lock onto the shaft so moving across to the left I thought if I had, this is the hub, this is our green locking piece, if we put a screw here with a gap in, if we do up the wing nut at the top, the green piece will tend to come away at the top and lock on the square shaft. So I redrew it again underneath, but instead of having a screw going through the plate, I put in a, a screw coming up from underneath, and then that way that will hold the plate uh, in, in place and it will be easier uh, to manufacture. I like this idea so I drew it again on the right hand side and you can see I've taken the the wing nut further away from the centre to give me more leverage and I thought this could work so the next thing is to draw that to scale. And that's what I did. Here on page six and the last of the sketch pages I've drawn it all out two times full size and made sure that all the fixings and all the plates and everything will fit together, which they do. So this is what we're going to make as the handle for turning our quill shaft. Well we have what I think is a good idea. Is it going to work? <laughs> it does in my head but we won't really know until we make the thing and then try to lock it onto this quill shaft just here. Well, we're getting close to the end of this video now, but in the next video we're going to get our hands dirty. What we're going to be doing is some good old fashioned marking out. Apply ink to the surface of the metal, use a centre square to find the centre of the hub, mark with a scriber, measure with a rule, and use metal dividers to work out the position of a perpendicular centre line. With that behind us we'll be drilling, installing an alignment pin, transferring hole centres, and drilling counter bores on the bench drill. All that and more. What a channel you've found here. If you've enjoyed this video, can you please give it a big thumbs up?
It only takes you a second and it's really good for the channel. Any comments you want to send in, please send them in. I read them all and I do reply to all of them as well. And with that, this video is at an end. Take care everybody and I'll see you next time.